What's up YouTube, Oliver from Tech TV here. In today's video, uh, I'm going to be going to giving you my review of the Google Nexus 7 2013 uh, tablet. So one of the most attractive things about this tablet is its price point. It's £199 for the 16GB version, um, which is quite a low price for a 7-inch tablet with this kind of spec. Um, so let's just go over some of the specifications. Um, the actual size of the device, it's, uh, well, it's a 7.02-inch screen, and it's got a stunning 1920 by 1200 HD display with a 323 uh, PPI ratio. It's a 1080p HD screen, which is made of scratch-resistant corning glass. Now, the actual size of the device is 114 by 200 millimeters and 8.65 millimeters thick, which is just 0 0.64 pounds, about 290 grams. You can really tell by using the device, it's very light and it fits in the hands perfectly. And one of the things about this uh, very small size of the tablet is that it also fits in pockets very easily. For example, this fits in my trouser pocket very easily if I was going to take it somewhere with me. Whereas other tablets, for example the iPad mini, you'd have to carry in a separate bag. Um, so the next thing we'll talk about is the camera. So this has got two cameras, it's got a front camera and a back camera. So the, the camera on the front is a 1.2 megapixel fixed focus camera, and that's here. And on the back we've also got a camera up here, and that camera is a, a 5 megapixel camera, and it's actually an autofocus camera as well. Um, it's got two stereo speakers here and here, and those are surround sound. So the memory available is 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes. This is a 16 gigabyte version. It has a Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro 1.5 gigahertz processor, and it's got a 400 megahertz Adreno uh, 320 GPU. This actually also has uh, two gigabytes of RAM. It has dual band uh, 2.4G Wi-Fi and it's available also in a 4G version or a data version uh, soon when, when it's launched, uh, I believe with O2. Uh, it also has GPS, gyroscope, accelerometer, compass um, and it has uh, some of the ports, you've got your micro USB port on here and um, various other ports like that including a 3.5mm headphone jack there on the top. And this is running uh, Android Jelly Bean 4.3. So the actual device itself, it's very light to, uh, to hold, which is a nice form factor. For example, if I was reading a book in bed, it's not heavy where you know, your arms would get achy and that kind of thing. And it has a very nice, soft, rubbery back. It's a very nice feel at the back, and it means I can grip it quite comfortably. Um, you know what I mean? It, it's really easy to grip, and it, it feels warm straight away, whereas some other tablets that might just have a metal back feel quite cold to touch and not very comfortable if they've been sitting around for a while. Uh, this is really comfortable, and also because it's got this rubbery back, it just doesn't pick up fingerprints, dust, scratches. It's very uh, resistant, so good material for that and like I say it just generally makes it very nice to hold compared to a lot of other tablets and it gives it a very nice high-end feel even though it's got quite a low price point this feels like quite an expensive tablet it is uh, quite well made it's a nice uh, tablet in general and I think definitely you know well worth it for the price um, <coughs> this tablet is actually made by Asus for Google as was the previous uh, Nexus 7 tablet um, so it's the same manufacturer as the previous version and uh, let's actually have a look at the software itself. As I mentioned before, it's got Android Jelly Bean 4.3 running on it. At the time of this video, obviously other versions uh, may well become available for it in the future. Just swipe up to unlock. And as we can see, um, I'll just put this down so you can get a better view of the screen there. Um, it, one of the things about this is it's on an Android. And if you used to say iOS, which I am, this is uh, so much different. And I honestly would recommend the tablet because it's got a lot of nice and advanced features. Some of the things you can do, for example, I have widgets like, for example, just dragging an analog clock on here, or uh, I've put a weather widget on here, which is a very nice feature. Um, you've got your Google search right at the top there. And let's actually take a look at some of the Google apps that come installed on this device. So you've got uh, Play Music and Play Books, Play Movies, Play Games, Play Magazines, which are all part of the Google Play Store. It's like the Google App Store, if you like the um, digital content platform for this device and one of the things I will talk about uh, while we're talking about Google Play is that I think that books are quite expensive compared to those on Amazon Kindle or even iBooks just one thing worth pointing out 
um, because I was the one who downed a particular book on this device, realised it I was actually more than double what it would cost on Amazon Kindle. Um, so obviously I didn't go for it. Just one thing worth pointing out. Uh, you can, of course, though, download the Amazon Kindle apps. You've got Google+, Plus, the social network, uh, Keep, which is basically like you can add post-it notes and things as widgets on here. You've got Google Drive, Calendar, Currents, Gallery and Earth. I'm sure you're probably familiar with most of those. So they're all the Google apps that come pre-installed on this. Uh, obviously you can also have, you can go into your home screens, there's a lot more on here. Um, as you can see I've got quite a few apps on here and I've installed a few of my own there. One thing worth pointing out as well, you might notice this pop card checker app. The tablet actually has NFC built in, uh, in the X on the Nexus branding on the back. I don't know if you can see that very well on the camera there. The X on the Nexus branding, actually right in the centre of the X has an NFC chip. This is really useful. Uh, for example, the pop card checker app is something I downloaded because my local transport company, um, public transport company, are called Nexus and they produce smart cards and this app allows you to check your balance or your validity of your smart card. So I was just testing that out. Um, it's quite a nice feature. As you can, my, you can't really, you know, see this. It doesn't really do it justice on camera, but the actual uh, sharpness of this display is just stunning. The text is really clear and it's really nice to look at. Now while we're actually on the software, I'm going to talk about some of the apps themselves. Um, I'm not going to open... Um, I was going to talk about Facebook because it's a good example. I'm not going to open it for privacy reasons, but the apps feel a bit like phone apps, just enlarged. Um, one thing I will point out, because for example, and I'm going to keep comparing this with an iPad, I just can't help it, I do apologise, but... Um, to compare it with an iPad, the app on a, on here on the Nexus tablet feels a lot like a phone app just scaled up because just the UI of it feels too big for the screen and just a little bit clumsy and like I say it feels like it's been made a phone app just scaled up because of the size of some of the things and the limited uh, features on some of these um, whereas on an iPad it's much more high-end experience definitely feels like it's designed for a tablet um, so let's just actually take a look at the camera the camera built into this it's the same on any Android um, it's a really good uh, built-in app because you've got quite a lot of features that you can choose from here. Um, for example, there's quite a lot of settings for the camera, so if you press on here, you can actually do panorama uh, images, you can you also set up um, video camera, that kind of thing. If we press on this uh, other circle, you've got options to deal with your exposure. Uh, you can also um, go to more options and you can do things like scene mode, which you can have things like night mode and sun, and you can drag around here, party, sunset, none night action and you've also got um, other things like that within the more options for example uh, your autofocus your uh, self timer and also the option to um, add your location to the picture that's a lot more advanced than what you get on the camera app on ios because it's just generally has a lot more features ios you can literally just take a picture there's not much you can do with it this um, is actually really well designed and one of the things I really do like about this. Uh, another thing you might notice is that there's no actual physical hardware buttons on the front of the device. It's literally just software buttons um, which are basically your return button, your home key and also your uh, application button that lets you see what you've got open for example there. And uh, basically that is a nice feature because it, I think it just works a lot better than, um, for example, on an iPad having the physical button. I just prefer having on the screen buttons and there's less to go wrong because the buttons aren't, it's not like a physical button where it might wear out eventually with it being on screen, um, it's not going to wear out, so that's a good feature. Now another thing worth pointing out about Android is you've got the option to add multiple user profiles. I'm just showing you how you do this, if we just head over to settings, um, we'll have the option to add other user profiles and what that means is you can have lots of different user accounts. Let's just head over to users there. I just made a test one there. But um, basically, for example, I could have my mum have an account. I just literally put that there as a test. But I could have anyone have an account on here with different apps and their own home screens. And again, I'm going to compare this back to the iPad, but it's really good to have that ability uh, to have different user profiles because one thing when we did uh, we were using an iPad the whole family was sharing it and it was just a nightmare finding things you wanted to find and this actually allows you to set user profiles and uh, each user can set their own password and that kind of thing and when you if you just go to lock the device and then you 
you open it down here are the, are the different user accounts so there's my second account that I've created and then it has a completely different background and everything let's just go back to my main account though and that is a really nice feature something that I have you know it's not available on all Android tablets either it's not necessarily a feature available on all of Android it's, it's available on this tablet and I know it must be available in the latest version of Android which is Jelly Bean 4.3 but not all tablets will run that latest version of Android, so this definitely is a good good feature for the Nexus 7 because it could be used, for example, in a workplace, in a classroom, in a home. Having different user accounts is just adds a lot more function to the device itself. And overall, I think that all those features combined make it a very good choice. I think it's a very good value for money um, compared to other devices in uh, which are similar. It's really good value for the money and. Um, Definitely, if you're looking for just a, a kind of budget tablet, it's not too expensive, it has good features. 16 gigabyte version is only £199, and it is definitely worth worth the money because of all the features I've gone over. For example, the stunning high resolution display, the ability to have multi user profiles. I just think there's so many um, features on here that I really like and that I haven't seen on any other tablets that I've used. So I definitely recommend it for those reasons. Okay, well thanks for watching this video, don't forget to comment, if you have any questions, please thumbs up the video and subscribe for more videos like this coming your way very soon. And just before I go, I'd like to say a big thank you to Google for sending this out to me to review, really appreciate it. Bye for now.